So good day again class. In this video lecture, we'll continue uh, the R universes. In the last video, we discussed the uh, double-stranded RNA and single-stranded positive sense RNA. And for the group 5, we will discuss the negative sense single-stranded RNA viruses. So for the Baltimore's classification group number 5, since their genome is in negative, strand, negative stranded RNA viruses, so ito yung genome niya class, so negative sense siya RNA. So with the use of your RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, so gagawa siya na anti-sense, which is ano kablik na rin ng negative, tama class, positive. So positive RNA na siya. Positive RNA is equivalent to MM mRNA class. So, therefore, alam naman natin ang mRNA is ready for translation na. So, magtra-translate yung mRNA into proteins and then for the production of your structural component ng viruses like capsomeres and capsid, etc. Okay, and then after that one class, syempre, mag-produce din tayo ng uh, genome. So, from the this one, uh, positive sense RNA template, gagawa na naman, gagawa na naman ng negative uh, sense RNA with the use of your RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. Para, pag nabuo na yung structure dito, class, protein structures, pwede lang pumasok yung genome. And then, makakabuo na siya ng progeny virus. So, that is your group number 5, Baltimore's classification, uh, negative sense RNA Viruses. So for the group 5 class, first we will discuss your orthomyxal variety. Uh, ito yung family where your influenza belongs. So sa influenza virus naman class, we have type A, B, and C. Okay? So it originates as zoonotic infections being carried by a number of different species of birds and mammals. So, for example, H7N3, virus for domestic dogs, wild birds naman for H7N9, and then domestic poultry naman class for multiple H9 and 2 viruses. So, orthomyx very day specifically influenza viruses class are zoonotic in nature. So, if you can observe also class, the genome is segmented. Diba naalala niyo yung previous video lecture, we have rheoviruses, rotaviruses class, uh, na merong 11 na segmented uh, double-sanded RNAs. So, influenza A virus remains one of the most crucial health problems worldwide. So, take note with this one class, influenza A, kasi in the previous Slide, I mentioned that there are three types of influenza. You have influenza A, B, and C. So even in a first world country class like in Japan, madami pa rin cases are reported with the influenza A. Even in our laboratory class, we receive a lot of samples during 2018-2019 prior to COVID-19 outbreak. Ang dami namin cases. So nakaka-receive kami ng 30 to 40 samples per day for culture. Bakit? Kasi kailangan namin siyang culture class for 7 days to identify its CPE characteristic kung ga gano siya kabilis. And then, second class is two type uh, kasi kailangan namin matype kung uh, ano siya. Like for example, H1 and 1 siya class, H2 and 2, H3 and 4, etc. Then we will prepare a report, submit to the government for the preparation of the vaccine next year. Uh, surveillance purposes is for vaccine preparation class. Uh, in the pandemic of 1918 and 1919, the virus is estimated to have killed between 20 and 15, 15 million people. So, if you can observe, meron tayong H1N1, ito H1N1, tapos H2N2, H3N2, H1N1, bumalik siya tapos nung 2006 H5N1. So, H stand for your heme agglutinin. Okay, ito naman class. Andito siya, heme agglutinin. That's a spike of your influenza. And N stand for your neuraminidis. Ayan siya. 
this is your new remedies. Alam naman natin ang function ng hemagglutinin. Hemagglutinin is used for the introduction. So, syempre, paglalabas na yung virus, anong gagamitin niya? Tama, class, new remedies. Yun yung pangtanggal niya sa uh, uh, cell surface sa loob para makalabas yung virus. So, that's your hemag hemagglutinin and new remedies. So, this is the basic uh, structure of your influenza. Ito yung nabanggit ko na kanina, yung dalawa. So, you have your hemagglutinin spikes involved in cell attachment. Ayan pala nakalagay na dito, class. Tapos, merong 16 uh, separate H type in your influenza A. In your neuraminidis class, N enzyme involved in the release. So, pag after, pag kailangan lang ng virus lumabas, kasi buo na siya, then kailangan niya lang neuraminidis to uh, degrade the inner layer of your cell. Then, lalabas na siya. Uh, and then, from, uh, your enzyme involved in release from infected cell. And then, RNA genome class, kay single-stranded RNA is highly mut mutable. Bakit? Because they have eight separate segments permit genetic reassortment between viruses during double infection. So, yung real virus rotavirus class meron siyang 11 segments pero double-sanded RNA siya. Ito naman class of single-sanded RNA, we have your orthomic severity. So, meron tayong influenza virus na merong eight separate segments. So, 16 class, tapos ang neuraminidase, 9 ata to class. Neuraminidase is 9. So, 16, so, kaya meron tayong ano class? Uh, meron tayong eto, H, sorry class, di klaro. So, H1 up to H16. Tapos eto naman class, N1 hanggang N9. Kaya kung magre-recombine sa class, possible magkabot tayo ng H1 and 4, for example. Pwede ding, ano class, uh, H6 and 2, for example. So, madami tayong combination class with this one. Ayan. Ah, yun class, ito pala nakasulat dito. There are 16 H antigens, although human infection usually only occur with H1, H2, and H3, and there are a total of 9 N or 9 neuraminidase. So, human infection usually occur with N1 and N2. Okay, so, uh, 16 yung antigen for chemoglutinin, 9 naman yung antigen for the neuraminidase. So, for the naming class, so you have your A for a virus type, and then a geographical region, so Fujian. So for example, sa Philippines, pwede yung lagay A, dash, slash, Philippines, and then strain number, kung anong strain number mo. For example, unang strain mo na na-identify, 001, and then year 2001, and then virus type, for example, H3N2. Okay, so, kasi meron tayong 16H na possible recombination ng 9 na N. Tapos, dito lang naman, class, ang pinaka-common lang mo na H ay tat tatlo. So, H1, H2, and H3. Sorry with this one, class. Mali yan. So, H1, H2, H3. Tapos, N1, N2 naman ang pinaka-common pagdating sa neuraminidase. So, the key to the persistence of the influenza virus is its antigenic variation. So, meron tayong dalawa class. So, you have your antigenic drift at saka antigenic shift. Sir, so ano kayo ba ng antigenic drift at saka antigenic shift? Pagdating sa antigenic drift class, if you can observe this one, for example, this is your hemagglutinin. So, for hemagglutinin, meron lang siyang small mutation, pero still hemagglutinin siya. Compare with the uh, antigenic shift class, na meron talaga siyang uh, changes or uh, mutations. For example, H1 and 2, kaya nagkakaroon ng new strain. Ayan. So, this is your antigenic shift. Uh, possible lang possible naman yung antigenic shift sa influenza virus class. Bakit? Kasi they have 
Tama class, eight segments. They have eight segments of your uh, genome. Kaya pwede mag-reassort. Kung may reassortment na magagalap, so therefore, possible talaga ang antigenic C. So each year, antigenic grief occurs caused by RNA replication error of the virus, as we all know, and uh, <coughs> discuss that uh, RNA viruses don't have uh, correcting mechanisms. So therefore, mataas yung uh, replication error niya class. So a drift is a minor change in antigenic structure as mutation is accumulate, uh, mutations accumulate. Okay, yun yung sabi ko in the previous slide class. That is your antigenic drift. So sometimes, the surface antigens can change drastically, causing an antigenic shift, resulting in a new H, N, or N antigen. So, pwedeng H3, N2, H1, N3. So, yun class, pag nagbago talaga yung, uh, ano niya, nagbago talaga yung H and N antigen niya, then therefore, uh, ang tawag doon class is antigenic shift. And then, if kung merong antigenic shift class, then it can lead to pandemic or epidemic soon. So, there are two mechanisms of antigenic shift. First, meron tayong tinatawag na genetic reassortment of the eight single-sided RNA of two separate influenza strains. Ito na yung binanggit ko kanina, di ba? Uh, the one factor bakit nagkakaroon ng antigenic shift, it's, it lies on their uh, genome characteristic kasi they are segmented, eight segmented. So, sa genetic reassortment naman, class, so dapat kailangan ng dalawang parent viruses. So, for example, here, you have your H2N2 at saka H1N1. So, pag magkakaroon ng reassortment na nakaka-create ng new uh, nakaka-create nakaka-create ng new type of virus. Ayan. Example ito. Okay? So, example also H3 avian virus to H2N2 human virus. Then, nagkakaroon ng reassortment. Kaya nagkakaroon ng ganito. So, if you can observe for this one, H1N1, so ganito lang talaga siya, class plane lang siya, di ba? Okay? Pagdating naman sa H2N2 at saka H1N1, so nagkakaroon ng reassortment, creating a new type of your virus. So, yun yung genetic reassortment. So, in addition for genetic reassortment class, pigs have receptors for both avian and human influenza viruses, as well as swine influenza viruses, and can be co-infected with all three types of viruses. So, in a uh, virologic term class, pig is usually uh, termed as recycler. So, kasi si pig class is capable of recycling all different types of your influenza viruses, so either a human influenza virus and or a swine influenza virus. Tapos kung merong human influenza virus plus swine influenza virus, pwede siyang uh, i-recycle dito. So, for example, ito class. So, you have your avian and then your human, then pig will serve as a recycler, creating a new type of your virus causing uh, Epidemic strains. And second for the mechanism for antigenic shift class is your adaptive mutation in which a novel virus slowly adjusts and becomes transmissible from a mammalian including human host. So, ang adaptive mutation naman class, uh, usually a factor naman na involved dito is the environment. So, for example, one virus will try to survive and try to uh, replicate. So, therefore, they need to uh, mutate para makapasok sila sa human. So, yun yung adaptive mutation. So, ang external factor, including your uh, environmental external factors, forces the virus to mutate para maka-adapt siya sa environment. Uh, influenza viruses A, B, and C are spread uh, through aerosol, so they are respiratory class. The virus attack the ciliated epithelial cells lining the respiratory tract, causing necrosis and slouching of the cells. So, therefore, class, pagdating pa rin ang CP, 
almost the same uh, cytopathic effect. Uh, incubation period is 1 to 4 days. Kaya pag na exposed ka na merong influenza virus, expect that within uh, 1 to 4 days, uh, wala ka munang symptoms. And then after that one, you will have your fever. Fever is the uh, first clinical symptoms of your influenza virus. For the laboratory diagnosis, uh, lasopharyngeal swab, uh, lasopharyngeal washes, and or aspirates collected early in the course of the disease are the best specimen. So, flux swabs are reported to collect significantly more epithelial cells than rayon swabs from the nasopharynx. Take note with us one class. Flux swabs yung ilagamit natin kasi mas malaki at saka mas, ano sa class, mas uh, high yield yung collection pagdating sa uh, lasopharynx collection. Uh, I tried this one class last year because I had the uh, severe respiratory infection and then it turns out negative for influenza turns out negative for covid uh, asthma lang pala class Ayun. so for rapid kits either first can detect and distinguish between influenza a and b detect both but not distinguishable between them and then three detect only influenza a so, yun yung mga rapid test natin class. For example, this one, influenza AB uh, card. Ito naman class, pwede both KA okay, tapos P, tapos ito yung control natin class. So, influenza virus can be identified in respiratory secretions by direct fluorescence assay, enzyme immunoassay, and optical uh, immunoassays. For culture, we can use your PMK, primary kidney cells, and your uh, MDCK naman class. So for the treatment, okay, you have your amantadine and remantadine class. will prevent infection or reduce the severity of symptoms if administered within 48 hours. So for the uh mode of action of the drug it's a siamantidine class is this one ito kasi si influenza a virus kailangan niya munang i-uncoat pero hindi inaallow niya mantidine na mag-uncoat kaya hindi nakakalabas yung genome at saka papasok sa ano class Nucleus. Then, pag hindi nakapasok sa nucleus, so anong gagawin niya? Makaka-create ba siya ng virion? Wala. Kaya, uh, it's a good drug class. Take note class, nung na-discuss natin yung DNA viruses, so your pox vi all DNA viruses will replicate on the nucleus except one. So, you have your uh, you have your pox virus. For RNA viruses, majority of the RNA viruses will replicate on the cytoplasm except your influenza because your influenza class will replicate inside the nucleus or release their nucleus and or release their genome uh, uh, on nucleus in class. So several genera belongs to the following paramix of every day. So that includes paramix of virus, rubiola virus, morbili virus, and sakanyomo virus. Is if we can observe on the on the picture class. Uh, the difference between your paramix of day and orthomix of day is that the genome characteristic of your paramix of day are helical compared with your uh, orthomix of day that they are segmented. And then one uh, general characteristic, uh, one specific characteristic of your paramix of day also class is that the Hemagglutin and neuraminidase is combined already in one antigen. So you have your HN and then meron pang addition of your fusion protein.
So for your parent influenza viruses, you have four types. So your PIV or parent influenza virus 1 and 3, genus Paramyx virus, and then 2 and 4 naman class for your genus Probiola virus. So as I mentioned before, class, in the, previ uh, in the previous slide, your PIV or parent influenza virus are enveloped helical RNA viruses with two surface antigens. So, combine na yung hemagglutinin at saka neuraminidase or class hindi yan sa hemagglutination. Hemagglutinin, neuraminidase antigen and the fusion protein or fusion antigen. <coughs> Tapos, ang kagandahan ng influenza, bakit siya pumapasok sa nucleus kasi pero na siyang RNA polymerase na class na pwede gamitin inside. So, your parenthalaza viruses are major cause of respiratory disease in young children. Uh, they usually cause in, uh, most serious illness in children between 2 and 4 years of age. So, they actually cause inflammation on the airway, specific on the trachea. We call that one as croup. Ito yung healthy class. Okay, croup is a... Uh, type of disease where there's a inflammation of the trachea, so inflammation or swollen tissue caused by your paramyx, so fairly day. Your PIV1 is the primary cause of your group, yun yung sinabi ko kanina, also known as your laringo, kay trachea bronchitis in children. Kaya meron siyang inflammation na ganito class. Yan. So the best specimen for viral culture are aspirated secretion and nasopharyngeal buses. So pwede gamitin for viral isolation class, you have your primary monkey kidney cells. In our, in our laboratory class, uh, we focus on influenza, paramyxo, also class and HIV and other viruses class like adenovirus and EBV. Yun yung mga major researches ng laboratory namin class. So for other diagnostic uh, test class, serologic assays are more valuable for epidemiological studies than for diagnostic purposes. And sad to say, uh, for parenfluenza viruses, no vaccines are available. To end for the parenfluenza virus class, they are termed, sorry class, they are termed, para influenza virus, bakit kasi uh, they have almost the same clinical manifestation of influenza. We learned before that the term para, it means almost the same or same. And, so, ah, sorry class, hindi klaro. Okay, almost same. Diba? Ayan. So, you have para. Para influenza. All, almost alike. Yun yung term na. Pag meron tayong affix na para influenza, virus, uh, ayan, uh, almost the same characteristic. So, parang ano class? Sa bacteriology, marami tayong para. So, you have your uh, hemophilus influenza. Tapos, meron tayong para hemophilus uh, influenza. Ayan. Kaya, they have the same clinical manifestation but different causative agent. Then, let's move to mumps virus. Okay, mumps virus related to your PIV and are classified in the genus Rubiola virus. Okay, for Rubiola virus. This, it's still the same class. For characteristic, they have your hemagglutinin hem neuraminidase antigen at saka F antigen. They spread by droplets of infected saliva and has a, has a worldwide distribution. So, that's your mom's virus. If you can observe, Beke, kung sa Tagalog pa class, kung sa Bisaya, Ah, uh, hindi ko alam. Ba, parang siya, sounds like ba. I, I forgot ka, sorry. It causes acute illness producing unilateral or bilateral swelling of the parotid glands. Kaya, andito siya class. Kasi yung parotid glands mo, andito na part. Ayan. 
Kaya nagkakaroon siya ng swelling na part here. Although other glands such as testes, ovaries, and pancreas can be infected. So the primary infection of the duct ductal epithelial cells in the glands result in the cell death and inflammation. Kaya class, for boys, uh, pag nagkaroon ka lang moms several times in two or once, uh, there's a high chance of uh, pwede kang mabaog because the virus can actually go to your testes. So the virus infects primarily children and adolescents and confers long-lasting immunity. Kaya very less up chance class that you can get a second infection with your mom's virus. However, it depends. It always depends on of your immune system. So th there are some cases that mom's virus, they don't confer with long-lasting immunity to such individual class. So, possible pa rin siya na magkaroon ng uh, multiple infection. To, but, only to uh, people who have a very poor immune system. So, the mom's virus can be isolated from, isolated from infected saliva and swabs rub over the stensens duct. Yan. Yung stensens duct naman dito kasi ito na part. So, dyan tayo kumukuha lang, sample, ito lang part dito. Yan. So, that's your Stensen stock. So, your Stensen stock, I hope na na-remember to during our anatomy class. Ayan. Kung hindi, then you can review the anatomy para at least makorelate natin class. That's the reason why in taking your microvirology class, the primary requirement is your human anatomy and physiology. So, your mom's virus can also be isolated uh, using your urine and CSF sample. Relative, they are relatively fragile, of course, because they are uh, enveloped virus. So, specimens may be examined directly by immunofluorescence and immunoassay, uh, enzyme immunoassay methods. So, virus isolation is preferable, although physicians really have trouble recognizing mums clinically kasi halata naman siya class na merong inflammation of your parotid. And then, in terms of viruses class, yung inflammation in the parotid area or neck area uh, is only associated with your uh, mums virus. Pero pagdating sa bacteria naman class, Tapos bata, pwede natin i-identify yung clinical manifestation as your current bacterium diphtheria glass. Ayan. Uh, so, pag tinanong sa board exam, if kung ano yung preferable identification for your mom's virus, yung isasagot natin class is virus isolation. So, for the mom's naman class, we have vaccine. So, kasali siya sa MMR, you have your measles, mom's, at saka rubella. So, okay, let's move to the next virus under your paramix of viridae. So, you have your measles virus. Okay, they are classified in the genus Morbili virus class. Paki highlight class, Morbili virus class. Highlight natin class. Okay, Morbili virus. Okay, highly contagious and spread by aerosol. So, for measles, Okay, initial replication takes place in the mucosal cell of the respiratory tract, then in the local lymph nodes, and then after the lymph nodes class, it circulates in the TNB cells and monocytes and spreads typically. Tapos after nakaspread na class, dun na yung dissemination, tapos meron ng skin rash, that's all. So, for incubation period class, 7 to 10 days naman siya pagdating sa misal virus. Tapos, na-discuss na natin kung ano yung uh, term na prodromal symptoms. For your measles, you have your fever, sneezing, cough, red eyes, at saka complex spots. And add them naman class. Ayan. And complex spot, and dito sa loob ng bibig, tapos merong white spot. That's your complex spot. And then, take note with the term class in add them. And antem class, and meaning nasa inside. Okay? Kasi meron din tayong term class na exantem. 
Tapos yung exam time naman, class, yun yung rush na nasa labas, outside. Like, exam time to be two. Yan. And at time naman, class, best example is a complex spot. So, about two to three days later, a macro popular rash appears on the head and trunk. So, therefore, class, for measles virus, for measles infection, class, yung main symptoms niya talaga is the macro popular rash. Tapos, yung previous slide, yun yung mga prodromal uh, symptoms naman, class. Kita niyo yung sa picture, ito yung macro popular rash naman, class. So, easily diagnosed clinically kasi, uh, due to the rush to my class ito then the virus is fragile and must be handled carefully of course uh, all enveloped viruses are fragile so therefore must be handled carefully compared to your naked viruses but in practice hindi natin tinitingnan kung naked siya or enveloped but we need to handle carefully and treat all the samples that virus are enveloped therefore Uh, kailangan natin silang i-treat lahat na these virus are fragile. For the specimen of choice, nasa pharynx and urine. Tapos, for the culture naman, class, we can use your primary monkey culture cell, kidney cells. And then we can observe the cytopathic effect with the formation of distinctive spindle shape. or multinucleated cells naman class. The, multi, the multinucleated cells is due to your F protein. Your F protein can actually spindle or bind to other cells. Kaya nagkakaroon ng fusion and then forming a large nucleated cells. Ayan. So for the method, we can use your serum neutralization test. We discussed this one already with your dengue. Uh, dengue back class, uh, sorry class, hindi dengue, uh, with the use of your poliovirus, tama class, poliovirus, meron tayo poliovirus 1 and 2 and 3, tapos ito yung antigen. Pagdating sa measles naman class, we can use your serum neutralization test. Pwede ding enzyme immunoassays or immunofluorescence. For acute phase of the disease for serology, pwede tayong gumamit ng IgM, measles specific na class. Then, we will move to your respiratory syncytial virus or RSV. The, uh, RSV is a member of your pneumovirus. Yan. So, patapos na tayo sa Paramex Day Glass. Most common virus isolated from infants with lower tract respiratory infection cause croup. Yan. Nabagit na natin ito kanina. And then, you have your bronchitis, bron bronchiolitis, and or intestinal pneumonia. Interst Interstitial pneumonia, sorry class, interstitial pneumonia. So, infection does not confer immunity. So, multiple infection can occur through life. So, yun ang problema pagdating kay respiratory syncytial virus. Kasi the produce antibodies at saka immune response is very poor. Kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng multiple uh, infections. Can be severe to elderly. immunocompromised patient and with lung problems. So, yung mga asthmatic, yun yung problema natin glass. Dito sa Japan, madaming cases of RSV pagdating sa children at saka pagdating sa elderly. So, RSV can be identified in specimens from nasopharyngeal swabs and washes or nasopharyngeal washes by direct fluorescence assay and or uh, enzyme immunoassays. And again, class, so since they are uh, enveloped viruses, so viruses is extremely fragile. So, growth readily in continuous epithelial cell slides such as your HEP2 forming Cynthia. Ito naman yung Cynthia class. So, it's still a multinucleated cells like your B cells. Kaya nagkakaroon lang ganito class. That's your Cynthia formation. Mas clear lang sa dito class because of the use of your HEP2. Malaki kasi yung HEP2 cells. Kaya ma-observe natin yung multinucleated cells or Cynthia formation.
So for the treatment, we can use your ribavirin, uh, which is approved for the treatment of your respiratory syncytial virus. And now we'll move to your rhabdoviridae class. Ayan. Sa rhabdoviridae na my class, we'll discuss only your rabies virus. Rabies is caused by your several streams of virus belonging to the genus Lysa virus. Okay, 40 years ago, most rabies infections occurred in dogs with some infection also occurring in cats, foxes, at saka skunks. Kaya class, pag nakagat ka lang cat, ayan, and or na scratch ka ng cat. So, you need to have, uh, you need to be checked kasi baka possible na yung uh, cat merong rabies. Ayan. So, dapat be careful. So, dapat vaccinated yung uh, pets new class for rabies. So, for uh, Structure naman class ng Rhabdoviridae class does they are bullet form. Ayan, bullet form. Tapos meron pa rin silang M, uh, matrix protein. Ayan, M protein. Tapos lipid by layer. Ayan, tapos they have a helical uh, single-stranded RNA virus. So ito yung electron microscope naman class ng uh, uh, rabies virus. Sample brain. Ayan, class. So, humans usually acquire the rabies virus when they are bitten or scratched by rapid animals. So, either dogs, cats, etc. Yeah. Bats, including bats, also glass, they also carry your rabies virus. Prodromal period includes pain in the exposure site, then have a vague flu like symptoms. So, the closer to the brain glass, the faster the uh, manifestation of your. Uh, infection. So, dito, virus enters tissue from saliva of a uh, biting animal. Then, the virus replicate in the muscle near the bite. Tapos, the virus moves up uh, peripheral nervous system to CNS in the spinal cord. And then, the virus ascend to the spinal cord and going to your brain. So, rabies virus is one of the best example of the ascending virus. So, therefore, kahit na uh, nasa pinakababa ka na lang kagad, uh, for example, sa paa mo, it will ascend and it go to your brain. That's the best example of ascending infection. So, mental status changes such as anxiety, irritability, and depression, they also become evident. After prodromal period, so, do na lumalabas yung hallucinations, paralysis, excessive salivation, hydrophobia, at saka seizures. The reason why nagkakaroon na ganito because the uh, infected part of your brain is in your cerebellum and then you have your uh, hippocampus. For laboratory diagnosis, it involves uh, determining whether an animal that has beaten a human has rabies. So, in uh, wild animals, they usually cut the whole head and then uh, animal is killed, the head is removed and sent to reference laboratory. Sa Pilipinas, usually ang ginagawa ng class is to monitor the uh, animal class. Hindi naman siya pinuputulan agad ng ulo, diba? Kailangan lang ikulong yung dog, observe the dog. If kung nagkaroon lang uh, changes, kung meron, then therefore rabid sa class. Then, uh, dapat mabigyan na lang uh, immediate treatment yung nakagat na tao. So, the fastest and most sensitive method of identifying rabies is, is specimen is by using your uh, direct immunofluorescent techniques. Impression smear of the brain, uh, hippocampus, pons, cerebella, and medulla uh, oblongata can also be used class. So, if you discuss it already in your histopathology class for impression smears, ayan, para ma-correlate ni yung uh, technique 
pagdating sa histopath and the identification of your uh, rabies virus using web pressure smear. So, rabies cannot be successfully treated once symptoms appear. So, yun yung problema class. So, therefore, we need to vaccinate all uh, our pets, including your dogs and your cats. If you are a pet lover, so therefore, it's, our res it's your responsibility to vaccinate them. However, post-exposure prophylaxis is 100% effective in preventing the disease if the patient is treated sufficient, sufficiently early. So, Ayon, pag sinabing post-exposure prophylaxis, prophylaxis, uh, possibly yung prophylaxis naman dito class is either antibodies that will neutralize the uh, rabies virus. Para hindi na siya mag-replicate and therefore hindi na siya pupunta sa brain. Ito naman yung mga rabies vaccine naman class. Ayan. So, post-exposure prophylaxis, vigorous cleaning in the wound site. So, dapat malinis, linisan na maigi yung wound site. Then, pro, uh, providing human rabies immunoglobulin. Okay, ibig sabihin nito, class, uh, it's a prophylaxis. So, pagkagat pa lang within uh, 24 hours, so dapat mabigay na lang human rabies immunoglobulin. Para, uh, and this, these are antibodies that will neutralize your virus. And then administering three injection series of your rabies vaccines after that one. And we are now down to the last uh, virus under your group number five. So that is your filoviridae. Under your filoviridae class, yung isa sa mga pinakasikat aside from coronavirus, you have your Ebola virus. He named after the Ebola River in the Democratic Republic of Congo in 1976. In Zaire, a patient treated at a village hospital for a bloody nose probably introduced the virus into the hospital. Kaya, uh, hospital infection, nosocomial, and then dance routinely reused in it. So, yun yung problema before class no 1976 because they usually reuse syringe. Yan, yung mga madre, syempre, kulang yung gamit. Yung usual nila na ginagawa class is to reuse the syringe. And then, ayun, ang daming lamatay. Then, we have rebel as a ear or ebozy class. It is the more virulent species. So, imagine that the mortality rate of this virus class is 88%. So, therefore, if you acquire this virus class, you only have to have 12% chance to survive. Ayan, kaya sa most virulent species. Uh, your Ebola virus class is almost, somewhat almost the same with your COVID in terms of its origin because the uh, origin of Ebola class is the same with your COVID-19 and or coronaviruses, which is a bat. Ayan, and then can be transferred to intermediate host then to your human host. Then we also have your Ebola Sudan, okay, EBOS. Okay, the mortality rate compared to your Ebola Zaire is lower, around 53%. And then we have your Ebola Reston or EBOR. Okay, it's a third type of Ebola virus isolated from the Philippines class because in that time, Philippines is actively uh, exporting uh monkey monkey cells for the laboratory diagnosis sa US and then in the US they tested the monkeys tapos nag positive naman class for E type of Ebola pero hindi siya Sudan at saka hindi siya sa ear and most uh, siya yung pinaka weakest na Ebola class and then can actually cause uh asymptomatic infection. So, Reston virus is named after Reston, Virginia, U.S., where the virus was first discovered. In the Philippines, four workers in the animal facility developed antibodies to EBOR but did not develop disease. So, for the diagnosis of Ebola virus, you have your uh, PCR. 
immunofluorescence or viral culture methods. PCR is the most reliable one. And now we are done with your group 5 uh, negative sense RNA viruses. So we are almost done. Kasi next meeting class will discuss your group number 6 HIV. Very short lung class. And then next is you have your hepatitis B. Uh, viruses class, that's your group number 7. Very short lang din kasi alam ko with your uh, HIV at saka uh, HIV at saka uh, hepatitis B virus uh, pagdating sa immunoserology class, it's somewhat uh, discuss it already. So, pagdating sa virology, I will only discuss as much as possible the virologic perspective. Tapos, touch, touch na lang din tayo sa immunology para at least ma-review kayo. So, we're done with your group 5. If you have some questions, class, and or clarifications with your group 3, 4, and 5, please don't hesitate to beat me up. I will try to clarify all the gray areas that you have. Uh, in our uh, video lecture discussions and thank you Zah. Bata.